So you've told us about Run Sky Alley. Um, you, you took a year off the year after, and then in 2016 you decided to do another fundraising event. Can you explain to us what that involved and the charity you chose to raise the money for? Yeah, and um, after Run Sky, we decided to to leave it a year just to give to have a break. And um, the thing with fundraising is you don't want to be at people all the time. So I felt like a year off would be good, and then come back. Uh, with another event, <clears throat> sort of two years later, a year later, sorry, so 2016, uh, we spoke to Maggie's Highlands in Inverness. Uh, they're based at Rigmo Hospital. And uh, what they wanted to do with this run was help, as well as raise funds, but raise awareness for people to go and use the, use the facility they have there. And um, so what I thought about doing was, thought, well, why not just run from... In, Sky to Inverness from Sky to Maggie, so that's what we did. So, as well as uh, raising a lot of money along the way, we raised a lot of awareness for the centre, you know, for people to use and things. So that's why we chose Maggie's this time. Yes, so Maggie's Highlands offer um, support services for people going through a cancer diagnosis, and of course, they're nestled in the back of Ray Moore, and it was just to try and raise their profile and funds for them. Um, yeah. As you've said, that, that was a, a great kind of charity to choose. Um, mm. So you, you just you obviously have a support team for these events. Um, did you keep the same support team for this event? For this one, we tweaked the support team ever so slightly. Um, some of the members that were in the Run Sky one couldn't couldn't get involved with this one, unfortunately. There was various things, so we we tweaked the event uh, slightly this time. We took um, we kept the team pretty much the same. We took Douglas McDougall in with us this time, uh, which was very good. So. That, that made a big difference, Douglas, and of course, uh, John Matson was with us as well. Uh, so that was good uh, for driving and sort of being in charge of the safety side of things, because this was a, a different ball game going from Sky to Inverness and running around Sky. So we had to be very careful what we're doing with these roads, you know. So Douglas was a, a big help for us like that. So we changed the team ever so slightly for that reason. Yeah, as you say, I mean, Douglas is coming on board with the safety and logistics was, was a key addition because the, the traffic of the roads at that time in April was very heavy. And um, we had two vans um, for sort of trying to regulate and break the traffic up. But can you remember how heavy the traffic was and how and <coughs> we were communicating by you know, radio and things like that? Can you remember all yeah. of those? Yeah, so what we did, we had, a, we had a van in front of me, a van behind and then a car about half a mile back with caution runner signs on them all. So they were sort of buffering the traffic. And there was also there was also radio comms between the three vehicles. Uh, so they could stay in contact, say, oh, there's a lorry coming, there's a car coming, blah, blah. So it worked, it worked really well, you know. How was your training for the event? Um, I know specifically we, we wanted a long run in there and you ran around North Sky um, and it was absolutely freezing cold. I can remember that. <laughs> yeah, cause we, we did that in, I don't know, when did we do that? February or something like that? February or March? What happened was, um, yeah, we did. We decided to do an all-nighter because this one was ever so slightly different. The mileage was pretty much the same, but with this one, it was going to be two nights for no sleep. We were starting at midnight from Portree. So we took Fiona Rennie came up to Sky and we did we did an all night run we did a 50 miler we left the house at seven o'clock at night and then we got back about eight in the morning or something I don't know 11 12 hour run maybe 13 hour run I can't remember um, and it was a good a good training run on the legs so it was a good be good be confidence boost you know and the um Again, the sort of national media got involved. And do you remember that Chris Evans gave you a mention on his breakfast show? Hey, that was so funny. I it was it was the morning. It was the morning of the run. The, 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 we were starting that night, and I was lying in bed and done a complete. <laughs> you know, you just got a shout of Chris Evans on Radio Two. He's just dedicated his show to you. And representing the Isle of Skye, Ali Kay is in the middle of a mammoth 120-mile run round hills and locks. That's 120 miles. All the way to Inverness, he hopes to race over the finish line in just 35 hours, which is mighty impressive, but not as impressive as the fact he's going to raise more than £10,000. Let's give him a cheer, shall we?
done, Ali. The show is dedicated to you. Oh wow, it was, it was quite amazing, you know. So that was good. That, that obviously again, that was you know. I mean, how many millions of people listen to you too? So also, that, uh, go on. I was just saying, he also had support from a number of sponsors like CityLink, uh, Run for It, uh, Co-op, Everlong Paint. And what did it mean to have all these sort of companies and businesses and uh, supporters behind you? Oh, absolutely huge. Well, I mean, CityLink were fantastic. You know, they. they um, they, they donated a hundred, nine hundred and nine one seven. They did nine one seven nine seven pound because it was the nine one seven route. I think it was. That's right. The nine one seven bus from Portree to Venice. So that's what they came up with a check. It was lovely. With the with the director come up and we took a photo taken in Portree next to the bus, and that was really nice. And that went straight to the Maggie Centre. Uh, Run for it. I've been um, I've been at the backbone of these events with me. They've been they've been sponsoring me now for the last few times. It's just been really good, and uh, the staff from there are amazing, and um, they're a huge help and support to us. And we really, really, really do appreciate them having them on board with us. And it's nice to get joined by staff as well, Ryan and things like that. When we do, he joined us that night as well. Um, Everlong Paint came on board and um, they sponsored our kit. They saw the they saw the ad on on the page and uh, which was really nice of Sarah and their, their staff there was uh, amazing what they did as well. And again the, the co-op and portray uh, they sponsored us our food. So they give us they give us um, I don't know, a couple hundred pounds worth worth of messages to to take over. So it was really good. And then after what was left from the the stores we we donated it to the Dune Star to Ali's Ali's boat because he gave us his van for the for the couple of days, you know. So that was good as well. There was, there was good coverage in the local in the well national and local press like West Highland, the Open Times, Scottish Running Guide, um, Inverness Courier, obviously because it was an Inverness based event that we or charity we were raising funds for. Did that help to spread word of the event? And did you feel that the pressure was creeping up at that point? Yeah, no, it was it was really good to have these uh, to have these papers involved, and uh, I mean the, the the priority is to spread the word and get as much people out there talking about it and raise as much awareness and um, you know that that's the whole whole idea. And it was really good to have all these newspapers on board, and you know the Scottish Running Guide as well, which was was fantastic. They gave us they gave us a page, you know, in the, the their magazine, and uh, no, I don't think the pressure did go on. Yeah, no, it was. It was. I coped all right with that. You know, it was. It was fine because we knew what we were doing this time. You know, so no, it was. It was good. Local football team, Portree Juniors, ran a football tournament and raised two thousand pounds for Maggie's Highlands. Um, just wanted to get your thoughts on what that meant to you to get that kind of the, the fundraising donation kick started like that. Yeah, that 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 was that was absolutely amazing. What what they did there, they they, they actually raised four thousand that weekend. Uh, the, the seven asides and. What they did was they give two thousand to Sky Cancer Care, and they give two thousand pounds to us for for Maggie's. Uh, you know, I I can't thank you know Phil and uh, Danny and, and all the boys the team. It was just amazing what they did and what they achieved there. And again, you know, that's the support of people in Sky. You know, just incredible. So that was a really really nice thing to, for them to do. You know, to to even think about us like that and help help us in the cause of raising uh, the money for the for the Maggie Centre. You know. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing, and you know, we couldn't be more thankful to Portree Junior for, for supporting us then. Yeah. Um, going back to the event, Ali, so obviously Run Sky, it, we were still multi-day with this event, but this one was different because you were starting at midnight. Can you just explain to us if that presented any new challenges for you? It did, because you're starting tired right away. You're starting absolutely knackered, because I didn't sleep the night before, and then I didn't, I didn't sit a piece much that day, you know, I was meant to, but I didn't, I was always pottering about at something. <laughs> I was getting around all the time. Uh, and then the reason we started at night is so we could finish in Inverness during the day. So it was a 35 hour journey and I had to work backwards so that we would finish. And because we couldn't come into Inverness at one o'clock in the morning, it was no use. So I had to work it that we would come in for about midday. 
on the Friday. So it was it was tough. It was tough. The first night was actually quite easy uh, because you're still the adrenaline sort of going and things like that. And you know, um, you know, by the time we got down just to Broadford, daylight had come up. That was the first marathon complete, and uh, I was feeling good. So no, that was it was the second night. That was the killer, you know. Um, and I seem to remember you running over the Sky Bridge and quite enjoying that. Can you remember running over the Sky Bridge? Aye, it was great. It was my first time ever running over the Sky Bridge and uh, Fiona and Pauline's as well. And we were joined by a, a, a gentleman who came to Broadford and joined us for a section. And it was just really nice to do that. The Sky Bridge was a, a real, uh, a real, uh, it was a real enjoyment going over that. Aye, because I'd never actually run over it before. The, the middle section um, was uh, up to Strome Ferry, and which is a notoriously hilly section. Did you find that was quite taxing on the legs? Yeah, I, I remember it as clear as a bell coming out of Balmacara and going up that hill. I'd actually hit the wall at that point. Uh, what I mean by hit the wall is you just kind of hit a, a really low point. And I know it's early in, you know, I mean, you're, you're only about maybe, I don't know, 34, 35 mile into the run. And I'd kind of hit the wall, just tiredness. Um, but I got going. Once we reached the top, we got going. We had a stop at the top. <clears throat> we had some super things, and the view was just amazing. Looking over Loch Carran and Strath Carran, and then um, we got going down there. The um, it was it was tough, and you know the hilly section going up, but it was actually every bit as hard going down because it's so steep. So I knew at that point I had to protect my knees, so I had to go down just as slow as I went up. If you know what I mean, because we were too. We're too far to go to, to start causing problems, so I had to be really, really careful of this section. You know, this was the this was one of the the toughest sections, if you like, just because of the sheer climb and the sheer drop. So I had to just really protect my knees as much as I could at that point. So, and we did. We just went down really slow. The um, once the second night fell, I think you were about at Machine, Is that right? Yeah. And then. Um, You'd now already been running through one night, and psychologically, you're faced with a second night, which ultra runners will tell you does technically tricks on you. What were you experiencing then? Well, at that point, I was okay, but as night fell, um, as night fell, um, you, you, you're really tired, and sort of after some maybe 60 miles, my eating habits then go out the window. I'm kind of relying on. Uh, sort of liquid stuff and easy things to maybe take, you know. So I um, I remember hallucinating. Hallucinating? Hallucinating. That, that's, that's, that's not uncommon. It's just like sleep deprivation, you know, but it just kept kept going, you know. And uh, so that was really tough. And and the thing is with the machine section, for those who don't know that part of the, the route, it's miles and miles of nothing. <laughs> just straight... Nothing, and we had orange flashing lights on the, the vans, and the van in front were going ahead. Fiona and Donna uh, were going ahead, getting the food on, but they had the orange flashing light on. When I thought I'd done five miles or six miles, I'd only done a mile, and my head was going at that point, and that, that was that was really tough. I remember that being tough, but I just had to kind of fight it out, you know. And you mentioned Ryan McKenzie before about run threat and their support, but he actually joined you about this point. Is that correct? He did. I uh, right, Ryan. Ryan's a breath of fresh air. He's just he's brilliant. You know, it's he's just fantastic. Um, <clears throat> he came out at Achnashin, and Ryan stayed with us till the end. <clears throat> Again, you know, he he was he was a huge support. You know, and you know, even just being there and uh, his encouragement, and you know, he, he keeps he keeps everybody going. He keeps the team going, and he's he's well liked, and he's well known by us all. You know, you, you know Fiona and Pauline and. You know, they all know Ryan, and uh, it was really nice to have him with us, you know. But I don't think a man's ever been so cold in all my life. <laughs> he was wrapped up like, uh, he says he says himself, like Kenny at the South Park, with the hood on and everything, you know, and the head torch. I, I can remember we were we were approaching Gar, and this is my own <laughs> personal memory, because I was running beside you at this point, and um, mm. you were actually asleep and running at the same time. <laughs> can aye, you remember aye. that? Yeah, kind of dozing off, I <laughs> Just keep me moving, but I was, I was staggering about the road there at that point, wasn't I? And that was that was without a drink. So that, that leads so, me into my next question: is um, obviously the, the lack of sleep becomes quite problematic then, particularly <clears> the second night. How are you managing the lack of sleep, lack of food, the sore muscles? How do you manage all of that? It sounds like a lot to deal with. It's 
a lot of these things is in your head. You've got to, you've got to really kind of concentrate and, and, and cope with it in your own way. What, what we did was, as I said before, we broke the run down into sort of 10Ks. But at the end of the day, my stop's just in front of me because there's a van there with my food, clothes, anything I need. It's, it's literally in front of me if I need it. So my stop, I'll always say 10Ks. If I want to stop after a mile, we could. But what, what, what actually worked really well um, that night was uh, Fiona and Donna, I mean, they, they were brilliant. They had the soup on every time. So we're drinking cups of soup and, you know, you're getting the soil contents, plenty of veg. It was, it was really good and it's easy to take. So that, that was, and it was obviously, the, the important thing as well is when you go through like a second night, is, is trying to maintain a body temperature and that that's important that's more important than anything i think is trying to keep warm because it was freezing it was proper freezing i don't, I don't know what the temperature was but it was very very cold you know so that that's that the, the, the body temperature the, the food <clears throat> and as much fluid as you can and just try and keep keep going you know and you have to manage it in sort of different ways um you know if it's a case of me not speaking for for an hour just putting the ipod on or you know, or, or I want to have a chat and, you know, spirits are high, you know, you've got Ryan and people there keeping you all going, you know, so it's just kind of mixing it up. And, and with the run as well, um, everybody was joining at different parts. So it wasn't as if I had one person for the whole way. It was, you know, people were jumping in and out of the vans and doing sections with us. So that kind of keeps you going as well, you know. Approaching sort of Muir of Ord, it was daylight um, and then a lady came and so. Sort of Give you a big hug. Who, who, can you explain who that was and uh, what that meant to you? I, as we came into Muir of Ord, uh, obviously daylight was up, and uh, Moira came out. Moira from, from Sky Synergy from Elgo came out and uh, uh, gave us give us a hug and uh, said we were doing really well. And I, that was that was nice. And uh, I, in fact, before that as well. Um, uh, we met Kirsty, Kirsty McLeod. She met us just before Loch Car, and she came out to see us. And then just after we met Moira, uh, I don't know if you remember, but uh, Gemma Bell came out just to, by Kiltarlity there, and she ran with us for a bit as well. So that was nice. You know, they're both good friends of Donna as well, and mine as well. So, aye, that was nice when we we seen them as well. You know. Can you it remember the? Helped. Sorry, go on. And it all helps, you know. As I say, you know, these people joining and coming to say hello and whatnot. Aye, ah, that's it, and it, it was um, it was building up on social media again. Um, so that brings me to: Can you remember the approach to Inverness? You know, obviously you're getting closer to achieving your goal. You're really tired. How are you feeling? Yeah, the approach to Inverness was um, was was yeah. I, I remember kind of getting a week a wee park there. We met Mark came out. Mark Cooper from Edinburgh. He's, he works for Maggie Saint in Edinburgh. Mark's a great runner. Um, and he's done an awful, awful lot of running, and he's done an awful lot for for charity as well, Mark. Um, he came he came out and joined us, my brother Ian, as we were getting closer. And I remember I reached the sign, and obviously I, I wanted my photo taken with the sign that we got to Inverness, you know, just before we got into to the town. And then we were there was a surprise waiting for me in my van. Uh, I don't know if you remember that, uh, Robin Womble. Oh <laughs> yeah. Like, in my van, he drove in, he'd driven up through the night, he hid there, so it was great to have him with us as well. Uh, and as I say, as we were approaching Inverness, you know, we were starting to, to perk up. And, and I went in, I felt I went into Inverness really strong. Uh, I ran well, you know, considering we'd just done 120 or 5 mile or whatever it was at that point. Uh, so it was, I was a lot stronger this time round than Run Sky. Uh, and Ryan was just in my ear the whole way through the town, which was, was good, you know, to to get me up to the hospital. And Maury first gave you an interview, which I, I actually filmed in the documentary. Can you remember how that conversation went? And you, were you glad to get the recognition from them? What we're doing is we're, we decided to take Sky to Maggie's. So I came up with this great idea, me and my mate, to, to run from in, uh, Sky to Inverness from the tree to the Maggie Centre. So I, we've decided to do it in one go. Excellent stuff. Get your teams in there. Bro, Ali, listen, I just want to say, uh, what, a, what a thing to come up with and what a thing to actually do. And well paid for you as a motherfucking Maggie Centre. Good luck on the remaining 10 to 15 miles of your journey. Thank you very much. Cheers, Ali. Cheers. Wow, amazing. He's probably getting iced out. He's just going to start his run just now. He's outside of Billy. Look out for Ali running to the Maggie Centre in Venice. He should be there in the next wee while. 
Aye, that was it. Was lovely. It was lovely. We kind of made the news of it that day, and um, uh, I remember being in the back of the van, and yeah, we got, we got the interview, uh, which was really nice. And it was again, it was more publicity along the way, and you know, thanks for uh, to the team and everybody involved. It was it was good. It was good for the Maggie Centre, you know. Can you finish? Uh, can you remember the, the sort of approach to the finish line at the at the centre? You know what you were feeling. There was a crowd there, and you know, excited, <coughs> yeah. an adrenaline rush. Yeah, as we came up through the town, we got a little bit closer. I remember passing the the wee roundabout at the Rigmore Motel, and um, I got handed the flag, the the, the Scotland flag, and uh, I kind of went on my own then, you know, for the, the last bit, and uh, I kind of I put a put a pace on because I remember you couldn't keep up with me. That's true, <laughs> aye. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. <laughs> keep up with me. Aye. Which was funny. But it was fine because we'd, we'd just had such a lovely response arriving at the at Rigmore Hospital and the Maggie Centre and the, the crowd was was great. It was And all everybody that was there was sort of family and friends and people come up to see us and support us. We just completed, um, you know, another sort of five marathons, you know. It was just amazing. So, no, it was lovely. And uh, as I was approaching there, you know, it was just adrenaline was going and, yeah. How much did the event raise for Maggie's Highlands? Um, and did it raise the profile of the centre? Yeah, for, the, for Maggie's Highlands, we raised 24,000 24, in total after after everything again we, we did. And, yeah, we, we really did raise the profile of the place. I mean, everybody, I mean, we didn't know about Maggie's and Sky certainly knows about it now, you know, because obviously the coverage with the newspapers and, you know, with BBC Alapa and the telly and everything, so, and the radio, so it was good, you know. And that, that was, that was that of course, was our, was our objective. You what know? we haven't talked about yet is, you know, you're obviously on this high, you've done this amazing achievement, you've raised loads of money for a charity. Um, what happens in terms of recovery? You're on a high and then you're on a low the next, you know, how do you manage the recovery in the, next, in the sort of weeks after <coughs> the events? Well, after running Sky, I was a bit of a mess. I, I was a bit of a mess. My, my legs and feet and everything had swollen up at a walk and stick. I just wasn't, I wasn't very good for a while. With Maggie's, I was up and about the next day. We drove back to Inverness. Um, I, you know, I'd been maybe 70 plus hours with no sleep. Drove back the next day. Saturday, we went down to Portree Hotel for a, for a burger and a pint. You know, it, well, I was well absolutely, I was, <laughs> I was absolutely fine. I was, um, I was, I was totally I recovered really well from that, and that's a sign that you're doing things right and you're getting better when your recovery time is, is better. I mean, at the time you're going to be stiff and sore, but, um, you know, I, I felt that this time round, that well, that time round, run, uh, run Sky to Maggie's was um, my body was a lot better, a lot stronger, you know, and I recovered a lot better. Be it. We changed things, as I say, we had, the team had changed. We had uh, Don and Fiona with us the whole time. Fiona and Pauline. Graham was involved as well. I never mentioned Graham at that point, but Graham was involved. So we had the physio as well. And uh, so that, that made a big difference as well. And, you know, what we wanted to do was run into Inverness really strong. We did that. We recovered well. So, you know, and, and Graham, Graham played a, a big part in all that. You know, and we're very grateful to have him on board the team for, for that reason, you know. As you mentioned, Graham Watt came on board um, to do physiotherapy, and that was just because you know you were having issues with muscle pain and recovery from the last one that we'd learnt from. So, what did bringing on Graham and his experience? How did that help you? Yeah, it was fantastic. Graham got in touch with us back in the early stages. I think it was like January, and said he was really keen to come on board and he'd be happy to be part of the support team. And with Graham's expertise and his background, working with many sportsmen and women, this was a, a new challenge to Graham as well. He, he, I don't think he had much experience in this sort of thing. But it was it was great for him to have him, great for us to have Graham on board um for physio and, and Graham actually did um, a lot of the nutrition as well, which was good and that was a job that nobody had to worry about. Graham basically looked after me, you know, that was his job for the for the whole thing, you know. Uh, and as I say, having his expertise, you know, K taping massaging, you know, and, and I think that made a huge difference because, as I say, the next day I was just up and about as if, as if I did, didn't do anything, you know, so that was good. It was it was fine because he was worried, Graham was actually worried that we'd be stopping all the time on the way home. And I don't think Graham quite believed how 
actually fine I was, you know. And I said, no, no, we'll just keep going. He, he thought we were going to have to stop and massage on the way, because we had a three-hour drive back to Sky after doing this. So, as I say, we were up for over 70 hours. Well, I was, you know. So, no, so it was good, it was good to have Graham on board, a big part of the team. Good. And uh, any favourite memories from Sky to Maggie's that you can recall? Yeah, I mean, the whole the whole event was good. There were, there were some low points. Uh, the bridge was good. I enjoyed going over the Sky Bridge at, at uh, sunrise. Um, obviously, coming into Inverness was a big a big one for me. Going through the town was lovely. Uh, again, we had, we had great support going through the town. Uh, you know, like so seeing people along the way coming out and seeing us and saying hello and joining us was good. So the whole event was good, but I think the, the kind of favourite memories are, are probably the bridge is, is a big one. And then obviously coming into Inverness to, to the finish, you know. Mm -hmm.